How old are your kids? Uh, five and eight. Do they play Roblox by any chance? Yes, my son plays. He's already a step ahead in being able to understand this better than us. <laughs> so my name is Sean Alul and I'm the co-founder of Metaverse Architects. We're a one-stop shop for the Metaverse. What we're doing today is getting websites, getting these 2D interfaces which exist on, on 2D screens, right? And extending those interfaces into 3D immersive experiences for brands. We, we have an issue at the moment because we, we're using the wrong terms. The Metaverse is more of a, a concept. The only difference is that we need a layer, a blockchain layer built underneath it to ensure that everything is equitable. That's an important part of then being able to achieve the metaverse as a concept. Instagram. The solutions we bring forward are very diverse. So, for example, a large real estate development company in, in Dubai. We're recreating the real estate that they sell to the market in the metaverse, in a virtual experience, which basically allows them to do property viewings. We're working on a concert with Snoop Dogg, for example, which would allow anyone to be able to experience a concert without having to geographically be in that place. Uh, we're working on fights with very famous boxing uh, champions, which I can't really mention right now because of NDAs. So so many different use cases and I think the most exciting part is that we constantly need to innovate because every client that comes on our table needs a different solution and many of those solutions haven't been achieved yet. Mostly the consumers. In fact, one thing that we're building right now is a mental health clinic in the metaverse. There's a multitude of different mental health provisions that we can actually bring to the market, bring to individuals in society that allow them to be able to either treat their, their current situation or even have new levels of interactability with members of society that they would not be able to do without the metaverse. On another end, the accessibility towards brands, celebrities and public figures has never been so easy. One pitch we gave 48 hours ago is the ability to be able to box your favorite boxer basically and then sit down with him and have a chat with him about his fights, his past, his history is something unique, it's disruptive in that sense. I was a gamer ever since like I was young. I feel like I'm an individual that was raised by the internet, if I have to be honest. The leap for me to be able to look at the metaverse and the potential it can have was easier in that regard because I had already spent most of my childhood gaming and being practically obsessed with these virtual spaces. Because I was also in, like very aware of the, the disruptive nature of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and how NFTs and tokenization can open new avenues on the internet with regards to accessibility and ownership of digital goods. Then me and my co-founder, funnily enough, uh, we got together and started seeing what's happening and just nerding out over a, a bottle of wine, like talking about how cool these things are. YouTube. So currently how the, the metaverse works is that to build in Decentraland, in Sandbox, you need to own a property, an NFT, which costs quite a lot of money. To build on that property, you need a specific skill set, a skill set that requires you to be able to understand that metaverse space and develop these virtual realities in a way that they can be deployed with minimal bugs. But one thing me and Luca, our co-founder, did very well is recognizing that gap in the market and starting getting clients from the metaverse space that were investing in these properties that wanted to build out their properties and having an entrepreneurial vision with regards to how these properties can be developed to generate revenue or brand awareness and bringing the different portions of these metaverse spaces together. Mac. Being able to recognize what problems are worth solving and which problems you should potentially avoid. On a day-to-day -day basis, we're always trying to push the needle a little bit further with regards to what potentially can be built in the metaverse and how immersive these experiences can be. Books. Obviously, being able to code is one of the primary aspects. So if you can code, you can speak the language of computers, simply put. So you're the missing puzzle piece for the majority of teams in the majority of tech startups. What we're seeing now is an emergence of being a technical artist, so being able to both create 3D immersive realities, but also code them, I think is one of the most valuable emerging skill sets that's really worth looking into. Try and understand what that technology is doing and what it can potentially disrupt. 
and I'm, I'm seeing young people, 13, 15 years old, they're making a lot of money just being involved in these spaces, creating NFTs, creating their own environments, opening their own shops. What happens when, when you're spending time in these virtual realities, you're actually making money and you're building something that can be traded and has real life value? What happens then?